Hey Don here, here's a quick walkthrough of that F Lydian picking lick. If you want tabs, you can find the details down in the description box. So with that said, let's get going here. Uh, we start with this six note sequence that I use all the time because it sounds cool and I stole it from Yngwie, so extra coolness points for that in my book. In other people's books would probably be a huge no-no to take anything from Yngwie because, you know, he sucks and all that. He doesn't. But we started on the 20th fret and the sequence I'm talking about is this six note sequence numbering the notes from left to right. One, two, three. That was Maggie, my dog. Uh, three, one, two, three, two, one. And then we go down the scale and F Lydian just happens to be the same notes as C major. So if you can play the C major scale, you can play the F Lydian scale. Only difference is, is that F will be the root note. But saying that, we're starting here. Move down to the next set of three notes. You can finger this like this. It's two, half, uh, two whole steps or you do one, two, four. So either way works. So down again, other two whole steps. And then we have a half step and a whole step. So we got four positions basically. And from here, we're gonna go to that note, which we also would do if we would continue the whole thing. But instead of doing that and being way too predictable, we're gonna go down the scale from here. So from the previous position, now we're just gonna go down uh, four strings, three notes per string. Then we're gonna continue the six note sequence for two positions starting here, the 10th fret. And then finally, we're gonna go down four strings again from the G strings. We're gonna go from the seventh fret here. So seven, five, four, and then. Which leads us to this uh, final note, F, and I'll play uh, basically an F bar chord here, but with the B string and the E string ringing. And this gives us the intervals from the point of view of the F note. We got one, five, one, three, and then we got the Lydian note, the sharp four, and then the uh, seventh as well. So there's a ni nice voicing if you want to get that Lydian sound straight away. So all together on the neck pickup, fairly slowly. And this is pretty much way too long to be a lick, but you can take the structure of it and sort of steal that and hopefully you can get some ideas how you can move around the, the scale. So I think if you see the building blocks, which is basically just this, and descending sixes, you can put them together in a lot of different ways and even improvise something with it. So you can come up with a lot of different variations on this, obviously. And actually a good way to practice this is to find a tempo where you can get everything correct and improvise your way around whatever tonality you're working on. In this case, it would be a Lydian. And basically try to limit yourself to a couple of different patterns. So in this case, if I limit myself to this Yngwie six note pattern and the descending sixes, so those are the two available ones for me here. And then I can improvise my way around the scale, but do it at a tempo where I can, uh, you know, try some new things without totally failing. But using these six note shapes in this case will enable you to play a bit faster than if you would improvise each note uh, individually, because now you can see each six note pattern as a unit, and then you can actually uh, do it a bit faster. And that, that's how I could do this right now. Uh, not that this was anything groundbreaking, but it's like 
you can actually improvise fast lines because you're using bigger units of uh, notes instead of trying to come up with each note individually because there's a certain point uh, and they actually measured this where you can't really after a certain tempo you can't choose notes one by one you need to start grouping them together so that's a good thing to know if you want to improvise faster lines that it's not cheating to have these shapes it's something that you need to do at a certain point depending on the tempo anyway so if i would do this in a sort of improvisational manner but slower so And I screwed it up there. You shouldn't go. That's a very inefficient way of doing it. But hopefully you get the idea. So I tried to keep it to only six note pattern and, and the English pattern and the descending sixes. Uh, and of course you can do this with more patterns as well. So the more patterns you have on your fingers, the more free you can be when it comes to improvising these faster runs. But uh, yeah, so if you haven't tried this way of practicing, try it because it's, it's a really fun way to do it and you can get a lot of, out of it so you can find a lot of cool things that you might not have found otherwise and also hopefully give you a different view of these faster uh, lines where it doesn't have to be this super strict you know lick that you always play the same way every time instead it can be you can break it down into smaller units so you can put together different sentences if that makes sense so the more you can practice this way i think the freer you can be with your technique and also like i said it's a fun way to practice your technique so hopefully this all makes sense if it doesn't you can scream at me in the comments um, if you want tabs like i said you can find it in the description and uh yeah that's it for today see you in the next video